Oh my gosh. Should have checked the uh, chat before I hit the go live thing. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Sean's in here. Hey, Sean. Sitting on a deck of a cruise ship somewhere. Jealous. Okay. Well, hi. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Um, hi. I'm sure this is the first time a lot of you have seen my face in uh, quite some time. Hope I don't sound too different. Um, just hanging out here. Gonna just take it easy tonight. This is not I am not recording a podcast. This is just chilling out. Um, so I'm going to keep my eye on the chat, answer questions, just chill. I've got a beer. We are chilling. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to pop on here today um, didn't have to be today. Could have been tomorrow. I'm just just kind of feeling it today. Um, but I got this feeling like everybody is reading a whole lot of things that have happened to me, have happened to Sean, who's in the chat, have happened to other ex-employees at the Diz and the Diz Unplugged. And I'm going to take a wild guess. And if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, man, I wish I could just see a face and I hear a voice talk about this because this is a lot of reading. And um, I mean, that's how I digest my media. If, you know, I go on YouTube, it's like, all right, if you're not short, quick, to the point, you have a voice and a face, I'm not interested. So, um, you know. I just wanted to, I wanted to be that uh, for some people who need to see and hear versus reading in their own brain. Katie, Dustin, how are you feeling today? I am doing okay. Um, I had my first therapy session in a while today, and that was very nice and very interesting. And that therapist was like, holy crap, <laughs> what did I get myself into? Um I'm assuming most everybody who's watching this video and is in the live chat knows exactly what's going on. Um, <laughs> that therapist did not know what was going on. And that <laughs> she was good. She was good. I, I enjoyed it, but she, uh, it was a lot of intake. Um, so yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for loving my attitude. I'm trying my best as I've been telling everyone, I've had at minimum seven years. I've had seven years to kind of process a lot of stuff. And then, and I've worked on my life. I've gotten to this point in my life. And then this stuff starts coming up. And then a couple of days ago, a big, you know, bombshell has dropped on me that of information I didn't know. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but for the most part, I'm doing okay because I've had some time to to work through some things. Okay, what is this? The big question that everybody wants to know, has you know who contacted me? No. You know who, aka Voldemort, aka Pete Werner, is MIA, missing in action, um, as far as I know, with the exception of him resigning from his post. He has not contacted anybody and he is gone. Not not contacting people. Oh my God, I didn't realize this chat was going to go uh, quite so fast. Um, ooh, doo, doo, doo. Sarah, Dustin, you're a brave dude. Thank you. 
Big love from across the pond. I appreciate that. Sean, I'm sorry you're having technical difficulties. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm... Uh, popcorn bucket. I'm glad you can see my face and hear my voice. I would imagine some people were wondering what my face looked like and what my voice sounded like after all these years. Hopefully it's not too different. Uh, Eric, it was pretty awful to find out via a third party that I was drugged and taken advantage of, aka sexually assaulted. It was not fun to find that out. Uh, I cried the exact moment I found that out. And it's new information. But again, as I posted, um, none of it came as a shock. It's It was new information, but it was not out of the realm of possibility. And the more and more I thought about my memories, the more and more I thought about my my past, I was like, oh my God, I, I really believe that this is exactly what happened. Um, and then it just came to a point where it's like, there's no doubt that this, this is what happened. Uh, uh, worried about my safety. Used to Flynn. Somebody says they're worried about my safety. I think I'm okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> um, did you find out from the post made or were you in actual contact with Charles? So... Charles posted on the Diz boards that he was confided in by Pete about certain revelations where he found out um, a lot of stuff. And he, he posted what he did. He posted his reasons for leaving the company on the Diz boards. But then, yes, separately, he reached out to me um, on one of the various social media platforms. He reached out to me. And we had a little chat, and I believe him. Do do. So sorry for everything you both went through. Just wanted to send love and respect your way. Please I know you have lots of supporters out there. I'm so thankful for all the support. The fact that uh, there's, oh my God, there's 200 people watching. Uh, 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 I haven't had 200 people look at anything I've done in a very long time. Um, is this a flattering angle? Oh my God. I don't know. Uh, that's my refrigerator. I'm in New York city, by the way. So, uh, my living room is my kitchen is my bathroom. <laughs> it's, uh, sorry. Um, uh, do, do, do. Oh, so my safety in regard to Pete Warner seeking revenge. Um, I, you know, if I lived my life worried about people seeking revenge for me, like then I might as well just go live in a glass bubble and not a glass bubble. That's dangerous. Just go live in a bubble and, uh, and, and not go outside. Um, I, I have to, I have to tell my truth. That's all I can do. I'm not going after anybody. I'm not, I mean, you can see that I haven't taken any kind of real action for anything. I'm just trying to tell my story. Uh, do <laughs> you might throw a tacky necklace at me. Wouldn't be the first time that tacky jewelry was thrown my way. Uh, Dustin, Sarah asked, Dustin, do you think other people might come out and speak too? It doesn't feel like it's the pervs first rodeo. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> Yeehaw. Um, I would imagine, oh, and my wife is in the chat. She agrees. 
I, uh, hi, Jamie. I would say that with time, others will come out. Do I know if other people suffered the same things to the same extent as me and Sean? No, I don't, I don't know that. Um, but it has been alluded to in several places that it's really rare for somebody to get to the point of where they're drugging people and have that be either the first time or the last time it, it tends to become a pattern. Mm, Yeah. And you don't just get to, you don't just, you don't just be like, you know what? I'm going to drug this guy and make him a boyfriend uh, without having gone through some shit um, that led you to that point. Sorry, I'm getting a text message. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. What made you, Campbell Soup, what made you finally speak out years later? Was there something specific that made you speak up? Um, yeah. So I think I've told some of my friends this and kind of alluded to it in the stories that I've written on Tattle. Um, so what happened was after I left, I randomly became friends with Sean on Facebook. And he's later admitted that he actively seeked me out and sent that friend request. I guess he was at that time, he was going through it and was curious to what my, I don't know what my, what I'm doing. And uh, so he, he friended me on Facebook years go by. We never talk. We never connect on Facebook or anything. And I just see um, a post that he did like a couple weeks ago of him and Epcot saying, Hey, this is the first time I'm able to be at the theme parks and not be miserable. And I, you know, I'm just having my morning coffee. I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see that and something just something clicks like, okay, here's somebody I know worked for the Diz. I'm pretty sure I've read rumors that they might've been in a relationship with Pete and they're talking about living a miserable existence, uh, working there and being in the parks. So that, that made a few things click for me. And, um, so then I reached out to him. I reached out on a messenger and, and we started talking and then we called each other on the phone. And I think all within like one day, we were on the phone for like five hours, just sharing stories about what happened and everything was just so so similar and it just built from there like it initially i had just read what he wrote on tattle and i was it was just good enough for me to be able to talk to him and then the more and more we talked the more i realized i think i need to i think i need to share what i've been going through and what my story is and so i started building out and like preparing myself to kind of get the guts to go online and, and share my story. And then one day it hits me. So I call him up. I call Sean and I go, you know, Sean, I don't think that I can share my story without sharing the sexual assault uh, portion of it. Cause initially I was going to keep that to myself. I was just going to, add to the to the countless stories of just a boss that treated people bad or a a relationship that ended poorly and me and him talked it out and i finally decided i think i think i need to do this and it was scary and you know at first there was some consideration that we knew that Pete was in a not so great place, but that consideration 
didn't last very long, at least for me, um, because I knew in that moment I needed to just get this out. And I posted that first part and I did not realize what the response was going to be. It just, and then it's moved from there. Let me see. Um, so I remember your Jackson says, I remember your last show on the Diz when Pete said you'd be missed more than, you know, how cringe is that today? Yeah. Uh, I watched that episode recently and everybody else is just, just trying to get through it. And whoa, the microphone. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> judging by how much wall space you have your apartment as a mansion compared to my old New York city apartment. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, I could throw a football if I wanted to, you know, that's, you know, a nerf football. But, um, uh, Robert says, hi, Dustin. Pete was a creep when I worked for him at the Diz welcome center. Oh, Oh, Rob Marks, Rob. Hey, Oh my God. Good to see you and glad you're sharing your story. Rob, I, oh my gosh. I, I am so sad to say that I didn't spend much time at the welcome center and uh, you were fun to hang out with the, the couple times. I know we went to a, a dockside bar there in Coco and that was, that was fun. Uh, Please share and John ask, please share and talk through your comfort level. I don't feel you have to answer overly personal questions. Yeah, um, I'm gonna gonna answer what I can answer. Hold on, let me uh, Did John uh, Travis asked, did John and Kevin perpetuate the problem? It seems implausible that they did not know anything. I that's been a big topic of conversation on the on the boards, both the tattle and the Diz boards. Um, I don't know what they knew or didn't know, or what they assumed or what they didn't assume. I know I didn't tell anybody anything. That's what I can tell you. And that's, I feel like that's what the consensus has kind of dwindled down to is I didn't tell anybody anything, but people could have figured out on their own or somebody like Charles knew. I mean, that particular case was a, a special circumstance since they were, um, you know, they were in recovery together. So that, you know, they were sharing certain things that probably didn't share with other people. Um, but I, nothing they did directly, like kept me in a bad situation. It was what Pete did that kept me in a bad situation and my reaction to that. I mean, I know it's not my fault, but it's what he did and how I responded to it. That was the, the reason why I, moved forward in that situation. You know, honestly, from what I remember, John did his best to be like, this is a tricky situation, but I'm always here for you. I, you know, I wish I, I wish I had took him up on that um, a little more. Uh, yeah. It, at least, uh, Cell phone kid. I know you said no one knew when you were there, but at least one ex member said that the dreams unlimited travel, let it happen and enable Pete. That particular person was there after me. I, I don't know about that. Do, do, do. Do. Um, oh my gosh. How do I keep up with this? I don't know how Rhino does it. Mm -hmm. 
So to, uh, Keith says two questions. JL said he make you guys play chess. What does that mean? And what was John's knowledge of Pete being a jerk? I think everybody knew Pete was a jerk. I think when JL is saying that um, we were playing chess is that he would pit different people against each other. And luckily, I didn't have to play that chess game, but I know that everybody else did. He would – one person would become enemy number one, and then you either hated that person or you – we're enemy number two. Um, do, do, do. Hmm. If uh, James asks, if Pete ever reached out to you, would you speak to him? What do you think? John was in a relationship with Pete for a very long time, so he knew what he was capable of, says B. Bizzle. I think he did know what he was capable of, um, but I don't think he knew it was happening under his nose. That's just my, my particular viewpoint. Um, Christy says, I'm so glad you had a platform to share your story. I am heartbroken to know what you were going through in Italy, and oh, and uh, we were just so happy to hang out with you. Oh, thank you, Christy. You know, Italy in particular that happened. Uh, what was it, 2014? That's a blur. I know. I went to I went to London before that, and then I stayed in Venice for far too long after that. Um, but your first point, you're glad that I had a platform to share my story. Um, is it the most ideal platform? Pro you know, probably not. Um, do I wish I could go to CNN and, you know, blast my story? Yeah, sure. But you know what? I found that I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think it was a safe enough space where I saw what Sean had been posting beforehand. I felt like enough people, there was enough goodwill to hear my story and, people were of the mind that they could understand the, the background of that story. So um, it was a good place for me to initially post everything. And I'm still working on, I'm still working on some more. Excuse me. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the best way we can support you, uh, cell phone kid? What's the best way we can support you? I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're asking. Just keep keep the conversation alive. That's all I can ask for. I don't want anything. I don't need anything. I So far, what's happened is he is no longer – a face of that company. And that's like the number one thing that was on my list. So now it's just keep the conversation alive. Uh, Beth says we fully support Rhino and other victims of the toxic environment and wish them every success, but all management should be accountable for creating a toxic bullying work environment. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can only speak to how the company was run almost 10 years ago, what that company looks like now and the management and leadership dynamics of that. I don't know. Um, I don't know what I, I just know what it was like then. And, um, the people in management positions that were not Pete did what they could at the time, but they were also either to the side or below him receiving the same, not the same, but they were receiving some shit, which is not fun. 
Side note, you barely aged a day. Thanks, Beth. Uh, I wish that that were different, but that is very nice of you to say. All right. What am I saying? I wish that was true. Um, <laughs> less people would have seen it on CNN. <laughs> good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, Brian says, hang in there. Thank you. I will. I'm glad you're a huge fan of myself and JL. Jackson says, I started watching the Diz because of you. It's a shame you crossed paths with him. Your enthusiasm for Disney was always so apparent and joy to watch. I've been thinking about this a lot today. Like, I've been thinking about how my dream job changed from dream job to nightmare. And while it didn't happen overnight for me, I would imagine that whatever you guys are feeling right now, about how you had this image in your head of what the Diz Unplugged was like and what Pete Werner was like. And then that came crashing down for you over the last couple of weeks. That's the same as what I thought my dream job was versus what it ended up being. Um, that kind of realization that it's, uh, it's no bueno. That's, that's the, I, I've been thinking about that. Like, I'm, cause I've been thinking about what does it feel like on the other side of this for the people on the other side of the computer? Um, and I would imagine that's the closest thing that I personally can relate it to. Um, sorry, give me one second. Do, 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 do. I'm just looking up something. Um, let's see. I don't. Uh, this person who starts with a P asks, I may have missed it, but have you been in contact with any of the old team, Rhino, Craig, or Steve? I have been in contact with a lot of people. Um, pretty much everybody I've ever met in my entire life has reached out to me over the last uh, couple weeks. So that's all I'll say about that. Uh, uh, is this live a one-off or do you plan to use this channel? I says James, I have no clue. I, you know, as far as I know, this was just a one-time thing. Um, Apparently, my wife, Jamie, says, sorry about my cat. Apparently, my cat's meowing is making it into the video. Many apologies. Um, hmm. Do, do, do. I went, oh, there's my other cat. Oh, let's get that out of there. Yeah, show some dignity, man. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, almost 300 viewers in here. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, why so hard now? Hmm. Uh, says, I wish you were still doing Disney shows. Well, I stand by the fact that right now I have no intention of making podcasting or Disney videos or anything like that, any kind of career path moving forward. That is, welcome to New York. Uh, that is not something I'm interested in. I'm talking here. Uh, I really like, <laughs> I like where I'm at and I like what I'm doing. Um, so for now, if I happen to pop on videos like this, to talk about this particular story or just to maybe just to catch up with people. That's, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so Linda asks, are you still a Disney fan or did the whole tragedy taint the parks, etc., for you? No. Um, no, I mean, no, it didn't taint it. Uh, I am still a fan of the parks. I still love listening to theme park music and watching theme park videos. I haven't been in a little while. We went, me and my wife went to Disneyland in 2021, I think it was. And so like two years ago, I got to see Star Wars land, uh, Galaxy's Edge. That was, Yeah. That was really good and um, dying to go back to Florida at some point, And we will at some point, but this doesn't change the way I feel about theme parks. It changed the way I felt about working and covering the theme parks, which I can't imagine. I can't imagine walking through a theme park gate with a giant camera bag and tripod in my hand ever again. Not going to do it. Just want to enjoy it. But that's me. Some people love that. Some people, that's their career. They want to do that. It's not for me anymore. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, what do you think? Um, Michelle asks, what do you think can be done to prevent Pete Warner from hurting others in the future? I think we already did it for the most part. I think that my friend is at the front door. <laughs> Jamie, I think I think Michael's here. Sorry. Can you grab... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be on here for just a tiny bit longer, but I do have friends coming over. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up shortly, but this, oh, she's going to talk to him outside. My dog is barking just a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay, cool. My dog is crying. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that these conversations have come up and the fact that we have, oh my goodness. You are needy. And the fact that we have uh, shed light on this is the number one thing that's going to prevent him from doing anything else. Yes, I realize she has left the apartment. And you can't handle that. There's a riot in Union Square? Oh, my God. Uh... I, I think I got time for like one or two more. Dooby dooby doo. Oh, stop it. Please, for the love of God. You think people don't walk down the, you don't, they walk down the street in the sidewalk. It's not your sidewalk. Um, can't believe there's a riot in Union Square. What do you? Uh, if anybody's got any other questions, I'll I'll hit those last questions and then that'll be it. <laughs> Puppy reveal. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, James asked, "Did you know anything about the hidden cameras in the bathroom that?" Charles mentioned. So there are actually two bathrooms in Pete's house. We always talk about the, the one that's in the hallway. Um, it has a sliding door. It was made specifically to be handicap accessible with this, like the sliding receding door and all this stuff. And uh, that's like the main guest bathroom. But uh, across the hall from the studio is a, the extra bedroom. It's like the original master bedroom of the original house before all the add-ons and that has an ensuite bathroom so i don't know if the camera was in the spare guest bedroom ensuite or if it was in the hallway uh but i absolutely believe that charles has no reason to lie about that and it does not surprise me at all do 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 all right 
I'm going to end on this one. I'm going to end on this one because this one is, is good. So Katie, Katie says, what do you want to see happen to the Diz? So the first very important thing has already happened. Pete has resigned and Corey will be taking over as like the executive leadership that he already was, but will be making all the, you know, the big picture decisions moving forward. Um, I would like to see Pete completely removed from all monetary investments in these companies. That would be good. I know that takes time. Um, I'm not going to, not worried about how long that takes or, you know, that, that, that takes time. Um, and what I want to see is the, the, like the really good people that still are there, as long as they still want to be there, uh, I want them to have that opportunity and I want to see them. I know that they have the skills, the talent and the love for the theme parks to completely, if they wanted to completely revitalize that brand. And personally, in my opinion, I think that's what they're probably going to have to do is just chuck it away, start from start from scratch. Um, use use the bare bones of what worked before, and and really start something new. Use your personalities. Everything else was based on that guy's personality. Use your personalities now to build something the way that you want it to be. You have, you have the name, the moniker, you have the following and you have yeah, the built-in audience already, even though I know it's a little in flux right now. Um, take what, what goodwill you still have and build something new. That's just you, just yours. That way no one can ever take it away from you ever again. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I feel the same about me. I got to do what's right for me. So nobody can freaking take it away from me either. You know, I'm living my life. I'm enjoying my life, my new career, my new home, my wife, my kiddos, my animals. And uh, nobody's going to take that from me, uh, no matter what new information pops up. So um, that is going to do it for me tonight. I really appreciate everybody. Almost three, it was over 300 at one point coming out when I just randomly posted this at on Tattle. I'm going to leave this uh, video up. Anybody can watch it. I don't care. Um, thank you all. I really appreciate it. <laughs>